Well, good morning. On behalf of the National Park Service and all of the staff here at Andersonville National Historic Site, I want to welcome you. Uh, all our distinguished guests here today and everyone, really, who's worked uh, so hard. Uh, we're so honored that I, I'm going to miss somebody here, but University of Georgia, I know, and the Irish Council. Uh, for choosing Andersonville as a place to honor our brave Irish Americans who fought in the Civil War. Uh, the research done by Dr. Shields, I hope, I hope that's right, Shield, Dr. Shields, right? Is it doctor? Good. Um, his work has provided us with so much valuable history and context. Um, I, I want to always thank him for all his hard work. We are really grateful for that. Um, I hope you all stay for his tour following this dedication. And if you have not already, please take take a few minutes to check out the National Prisoner of War Museum behind me. Um, there were some wonderful videos there and history as well. Um, again, thank you for coming. I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Lee Kinneman of Americus. For, for being our hosts here. We're, we're so grateful to the National Park Service for all the support you've given us. Good morning, Dave Ahorja. I'm Quivni Krohor, it's Misha Quivni Krohor. I'm um, Ireland's Consul General here in the Southeast. And it is my great privilege on behalf of the Government of Ireland to welcome you all here this morning for this very special event. Um, I think today, for, for all of us who, who participated in the tour, for all of us here this morning, it's a somber day, it's, it's a day of remembrance, it's a day of, of restitution, and it's a profoundly important day as we stand here um, with the graves of Andersonville close by and recall the suffering of the Sons of Ireland in this place. And I really want to thank all of you for joining with us today in this act of memory. We're so thankful, as I said, to the National pa Park Service, to Dr. Damien Shields, to Professor Allen, and to our partners in the Northern Ireland Bureau for their partnership and their dedication in bringing this to pass. Um, and I would like to invite some of our local dignitaries here who are really honoured to have with us in, in marking this moment, this important moment. I'd like to invite Mayor Lake, Lee Kinneman, Mayor of Americas, to join with us and share a few words with us this morning. Thank you so much. What a great honor it is to be here today as uh, we gather to remember the Irish, the sons of Aaron who died here, sacrificed their lives in the war to end the disunion and to end slavery. And it is an honor for me, especially because I myself descend from Irish stock, as most of us do. Probably everyone here has some Irish blood. Whether you do or not, you probably claim it on St. Patrick's Day, a day we all wear green and drink green beer and actually do more, I believe, than is done in Ireland, typically. <laughs> but I'm sure that uh, you feel what I feel about if you're here today and certainly have that Irish blood coursing in your veins, you feel what I do, which is a, a great sense of connection uh, to Ireland. I'm sure many of you have been there. I took a trip not too many years ago and fell in love with the country. It was the first time I was there and dearly want to go back and uh, spend time there. I was saying earlier that I felt a strange connection and after I did my DNA test through Ancestry.com, it became clear why I had that feeling uh, with a percentage of Irish blood from the southern portion of the Ireland, uh, Ireland from the island and the north as well. Um, we descend in, from many Irish on both sides of the family. So I'm grateful to be here and to welcome you to this great event and, and 
also to welcome those of you who stayed in Americas. I was unaware that you were staying in the Windsor Hotel in Americas. We're grateful that you stayed there. Um, I'd like to recognize Mr. Sheffield Hale, who is a, a, a son of Americas. He, come, he comes from deep Americas stock, as do I. And uh, we're grateful to have him. He is the executive director of the Atlanta History Center and um, is, uh, has been affiliated with history and historic preservation, I think, for most of your life. And we're grateful to have you here in Americas and in Sumter County. So on behalf of the city of Americas, the county seat of Sumter County, I welcome you and express my deep appreciation uh, to the Consul General to the dignitaries from Ireland who are here for this uh, important event. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll turn it over to... <laughs> and we're also honored to have with us this morning Mrs. Alison Drennan, who is the field representative of the Congressman for this district, Congressman Sanford Bishop. Alison, thank you so much for being with us to share a few words on behalf of the representative. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it is an honor to be here today on behalf of Congressman Sanford Bishop as we gather at the Andersonville National Historic Site to commemorate the Andersonville Irish Project and the unveiling of this memorial plaque. Congressman Bishop works to ensure that the Andersonville National Historic Site and Cemetery, one of only two national cemeteries opened by the National Park Service, has the federal resources needed to preserve our history and honor our veterans. This allows us and subsequent generations to learn the lessons of our rich and sometimes complicated past so that we can build a better future. The Andersonville Irish Project is a remarkable endeavor that seeks to shed light on a significant but often overlooked chapter in American history, uncovering the identities and origins of the Irish Americans interred at Andersonville National Cemetery. This project pays homage to these brave individuals, brings their stories to the forefront, and offers us a deeper understanding of the impact of the Civil War on Ireland and Irish America. Congressman Bishop shares appreciation for those who have made this work possible, including Professor Nicholas Allen of the Wilson Center for Humanities and Arts at the University of Georgia, the Consulate General of Ireland in Atlanta, and the Northern Ireland Bureau, the dedicated staff at Andersonville National Historic Site, and Irish Government Minister Dara O'Brien. This initiative is another demonstration of the deep connections between Ireland and America. It reminds us of the sacrifices made by the Irish, um, by the Irish American community in shaping the history of this great nation. The memorial plaque being unveiled today is a testament to our commitment to preserving and honoring their legacy. Thank you for your hard work to recognize and celebrate the memory of these brave Irish Americans whose story continues to inspire us today. Thank you. And next I'd like to invite a very um, important part of today's ceremony, um, that is our colleague Eamon McConville, the Deputy Director of the Northern Ireland Bureau in Washington, and that's in recognition of the fact that it's so important to do, uh, to commemorate like this on an all-Ireland basis. Um, and we'd like to invite Eamon to, to take the floor. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Quiva, and um, just really want to echo much of what Quiva and the Mayor has said. Um, as well as being a somber event, it's also um, an opportunity, I think, to to recognize the strong relationships between the island of Ireland and, and America. Um, you know, uh, the mayor was talking earlier about the, the railroad, and I know that Sheffield has done plenty to make sure that America is recognized in, in, in that journey, and obviously the Irish were a big part of building that network, uh, as well as the, the cities and towns across the US. Um, I think we can claim 24 
residents of the US now with Irish roots and about 19 of those with Scots-Irish, Ulster-Scots tradition. Um, and I know that that's particularly strong here in, in Georgia. Um, I think it's also important to say that uh, the US's relationship with Ireland is particularly important for ourselves. I think in this, the 25th anniversary of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, I think without the US's assistance in that, you know, we're, it, it's something that we're so grateful for. Um, Northern Ireland is now one of the most peaceful places in the world. Um, and I, we hope, I know that uh, the mayor has been, and I know that John is going soon to uh, play a bit of golf there. So uh, you're all very welcome uh, to, to come along and uh, visit Ireland, North and South. Thank you very much. Um, and now at the, the, the exciting part of the program, I think, uh, we, 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 we're going to hear now from Dr. Damien Shields who is the man who really has made all of this happen. We're so grateful to him. Damien is the, the brains, the energy, the muscle even, behind uh, the Andersonville Irish Project. And he is the man really who has brought this story to life. So Damien, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks a million, Cleva. Uh, yeah, this might, we'd say I get on with this now. This is a Particularly special day for, for, for these these guys. Um, as we've discussed a, a bit already, the, the project commenced in, in an effort to try and identify the men who, who were interred in Andersonville National Cemetery. This is the site that has the most Irish Americans who died in a single spot in the Civil War. And because of the fantastic work of Lawrence Atwater and because of the preservation of the site and the work of people like in the National Park Service, so many of these names have been recorded and maintained in the National Cemetery that creates a, a, an incredible opportunity both to remember them and also to assess and analyze the scale of the impact of the American Civil War on Irish people. And it was a project that started back in 2020, let's say, with the aim of trying to identify Irish Americans who died here. But in October 2021, it brought me to what you might first consider to be a fairly surprising location when I found myself on an isolated, lonely stretch of country road on the Irish Atlantic coast of West County Clare. Unlike a lot of rural roads in Ireland, this one had a name. It was called the Seafield Line. It's a beautiful setting today. I would recommend you visit West Clare if you get an opportunity. But this particular road has very dark origins. The Seafield Line was one of the notorious famine relief works designed during the worst days of the Great Irish Famine to provide what was an ever-growing number of destitute poor with employment. Back in 1846, 120 desperate men were given work on the Seafield Line to try and feed his family. One of them was a man named Miles Maloney. But in the famine, conducting heavy manual labour was poor fare for someone whose body was weakening in a famine-ravaged West Clare. On the 3rd of April 1847, a year that is still known in Ireland today as Black 47, Miles Maloney was struck from the works register, another fatality in what was turning into a sea of death. But in those days there was little time for sentiment. His place on the Seafield line had to be taken, and it fell to his son, Owen Maloney, who was 14 years old, to take it. Owen worked on that line until it was finished. He, his mother and his siblings then survived on outdoor relief from the local famine workhouse. But slowly, slowly, Owen helped them to get a measure of certainty back in their lives. He took farm labouring jobs where he could get them, supported his mother by scrimping and saving. And through the 1850s, as it wore on, he finally got enough to buy a precious ticket for America. At last, the family's future seemed bright. He got employment in the United States when he arrived there in 1860, and money started to flow back to West Clare. Then the war came. He, along with another quarter of a million Irish Americans, enlisted. He marched off with the 6th New Jersey Infantry on the 7th of November 1861, a march that ultimately brought him here to this place, to Anderson uh, Prison, where on the 14th of July, 
the death he had so narrowly escaped during his youth in Ireland finally got its clutches on him. He's still here, just over there, resting in grave 3284, among hundreds of other Irish immigrants whose hopes for a future for themselves and their families were dashed behind the Andersonville stockade. Sorry. There are a few stories from the American Civil War that so readily and so forcefully demonstrate the links between mass Irish emigration in the mid-19th century and the American Civil War than that of Owen Maloney. For tens of thousands of Irish, be they soldiers, or the wives of soldiers, or the parents of soldiers, or the children of soldiers, the conflict between 1861 and 1865 was the second great trauma of their lives. For some, like Owen Maloney, it brought the bitter irony of death at the hands of the same want and disease that had already ravaged their families during the worst days of the 1840s and 1850s. We are here today to remember these men and their families, to remember what the war cost them, and importantly, to remember their links to the island of Ireland. As emigrants who by and large never returned to Irish shores, those are links that in Ireland, in contrast to here in the United States, have faded with the passage of time. And it's fair to say that we've not always done enough in Ireland to tell their story, to remember their experiences, and to remember that great second trauma. This is why this is a particularly special, important, and poignant event. Given the recognition these men are receiving today from representatives not just of the United States, but from across the island of Ireland. I'd personally like to extend a special thanks to Minister O'Brien, to Deputy Director McConville and Consul General Nick Rakour for, for visiting these men's final resting places and for playing such a vital and important role in realising the dedication of this memorial plaque. I doubt that any of us would be standing here today without the tireless efforts of Professor Nicholas Allen, Director of the Wilson Centre at UGA, who's worked so hard to make this happen. And similarly, and I feel this every time I come to the, uh, America, uh, about the National Park Service. What an incredible institution it is. Um, Superintendent Gia Wagner of Andersonville, um, Charles, Jody, all the team here um, deserve great um, acknowledgement for their ongoing work on the site, their efforts in assisting the Andersonville Irish uh, project since its inception. I have had the visit, privilege to visit many of the national parks around the United States, um, particularly Civil War ones, and my admiration and respect for the staff of the Park Service uh, just grows every time. As we speak, the number of Irish Americans we've identified at the National Cemetery is closing in on 900 men. It was 850 when, when we were speaking just a couple of weeks ago. It will soon breach 1,000. The work of that project is undertaken uh, largely on a volunteer basis, but we would never have gotten this far without the assistance we've received, both from the National Park Service administered Prisoner of War Research Grant, made possible by the generosity of the Friends of Anderson, Andersonville, and that of the Irish Department of Foreign Affairs through the Irish Consulate General in Atlanta. These are grants that have been absolutely instrumental in allowing us to conduct the primary research that's necessary in order to identify these men as Irish American. I'd also like to take an opportunity to thank the members of the public who have come forward so far with contributions to the project, especially as they are often recounting details of one of their ancestors who perished here. A very special note of acknowledgement goes to my friend and colleague Jackie Bedell, herself a descendant of Sligo immigrants, who's been volunteering her, her spare time in huge hours to assist in identifying the origins of dozens of the men interred in the National Cemetery. Even as we mark the dedication of this plaque today, the number of identified Andersonville Irish it remembers will continue to grow as the project proceeds into the future. These discoveries continue to emerge on an almost weekly basis. And I want to leave you with a letter that Jackie uncovered less than one week ago, composed by an Irish immigrant woman called Anne Hand. She was the illiterate wife of fifth New York infant, or fifth New York cavalryman, Lawrence Hand, also an Irish immigrant. Today and now may well be the first day since 1864 that this letter has been read aloud. And I'll read it. Sir, please excuse a poor soldier's wife for troubling you, as I have heard nothing of my husband since December 29, 1863. 
He was a prisoner of war since July the 6th, 1863, and I am in great distress, myself and my family, and we have had sickness and distress, and I am very uneasy for to know whether my husband, Lawrence Hand, is dead or alive. He belonged to Company C, 5th New York Cavalry, and was taken prisoner of war in July 1863. I have never heard from him but once since. He was taken prisoner, and for the love of God, let me know whether my husband is dead or alive, for I have a family to support, and the paving streets of New York will not support us. No more at present, from Anne Hand, wife of Lawrence Hand. Unbeknownst to Anne, Lawrence Hand had died here on 15th of May of 1864. He's buried in grave 1104. Today we remember Anne, we remember Lawrence, we remember their son James, and all the Irish Americans from our island whose lives were forever altered by events on this small patch of Georgia countryside. so beautiful and I, I know how meaningful and how personal this is to you and I just really want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for, for allowing us to understand that as well. I really, really thank you for everything you've done. I know this has been the, your life's work really. So thank you and I'm so pleased that we can do this together today. Um, next friends, I'd like to introduce you to um, our, our, our guest of honour this morning, um, Minister Dara O'Brien, Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage of Ireland who has travelled here to be with us today to inaugurate this very, to dedicate this very special flag. Minister. Well, Dave Galera Wajan, good morning, everybody. I card you, uh, dear friends of Ireland here in Georgia and dignitaries, Mayor Lee Kinneman, um, Congressman Bishop's representative, Alison Drynan, my good friend, State Senator Mike Dugan. It's great to be back here in Georgia again for my second time this year. And I'm really immensely honoured uh, to be here today with Cuevany Crover, who's a wonderful representative of, of the Irish government out of, out of Atlanta, and she's a magnificent team here to our host in the National Park Service. I thank you so much for uh, your warm welcome here uh, today. Uh, we're certainly honoured uh, by your presence, and I've had, like many Irish, as the mayor have said, I have many uh, family here in the United States, and I've travelled across this great country and visited many of the national monuments and national parks and I know you're rightly proud of the work that's done uh, by the staff in, in the National Park Service. But I am immensely honoured to be here today uh, and it is an historic moment to dedicate this plaque in memory of the Irish and Irish Americans who suffered and died here in Andersonville Prison during the American Civil War. And that was brought really real to me and I'm sure to everyone who walked with Damien and Nicholas around this historic site. Um, with Eamon, I should have recognised your rep representative from the Northern Ireland office, Eamon. Great to have you here too. But it really did come uh, to life, um, if that's not in itself an oxymoron. But really, you could feel it. You could feel the thousands of people who were here, the suffering uh, that they endured. Um, and the, this place is treated with that solemnness, I believe, by uh, the custodian. Uh, here, so it, it is absolutely an immense honour. We're proud as the Government of Ireland to support the groundbreaking work led by Dr. Damien Shields to recover the untold story of the Irish in Andersonville. And we thank his committed partners in these efforts, including Jackie Bedell, Professor Nicholas Allen uh, at the University of Georgia. Sincerely thank you. The National Park Service, as I've said, and our friends at the Northern Ireland Bureau. This is a really important day for Ireland in this small part of, of South Georgia. Uh, and it's an important day for Ireland in the United States, and in the southern United States in particular. It helps to complete our understanding of the relationship between Ireland, its diaspora, and the United States, and our understanding of the role played by our diaspora during the American Civil War. Most of all, though, it is a day to honor the memory of those who died here some of the testimonies that Damien has read to you here this morning. But really to restore them the dignity of remembrance, to name them and to root them in their home country. Apart from World War I, more Irish were actually engaged in the American Civil War than any other war 
in modern history. And that is a fact that speaks to the interconnectivity of the American and Irish people. The American Civil War, we all know, but we should remember, occurred in the aftermath of the peak of Irish migration to the United States. And in the 19th century was really a century of uprising, of poverty, of oppression, of hunger, of death. And our nation had been devastated by Ungarta Moor, the Great Famine. It's estimated that almost 1.8 million Irish people emigrated to this great country between 1845 and 1855 alone. And those men, women, and indeed their children arrived in the United States at a turning point in history for this country as the country found itself on the brink of a bloody conflict that would define its future. As has been mentioned already, it's estimated that a quarter of a million Irish Americans fought for the Union, 180,000 of which were born in Ireland, and a further 70,000 children of Irish-born emigrants. This represents almost 10%, actually, of the United States wartime military. Irishmen also fought for the Confederacy, as you know, in, albeit in smaller numbers. But on both sides of, of that terrible conflict, Irishmen uh, and American Irishmen fought and lost their lives, and thousands of them lost their lives. Indeed, the very first person to lose his life in the war was actually a Tipperary man, a Daniel Hopp, part of a garrison, garrison at Fort Sumter in Charleston. Uh, he was 36 years old one of many Irish serving in the small regular US military forces at the start of the war. Someone who undoubtedly would have suffered and known the famine in Ireland and left that devastation. He was the first person to lose his life in the, in the American Civil War. And so we see Ireland's American story also playing out in the story of Andersonville. It's an emigrant story, men far from home, far from familiar comforts, fighting and dying, on American soil for the United States. And this wonderful place, this historic place, Andersonville National Cemetery, is thought to contain the highest concentration of Irish American dead from the Civil War interned at a single site. There are people from every county of, the, of our Ireland's 32. People from all backgrounds, from all faiths, Catholics, Presbyterian, Protestant, Church of Ireland, and I really want to, Damien, thank you and the work of others supported by members of the public who are contributing that local and family knowledge. So far, so more than 850 Irish and Irish American who are died here have now been identified, and more to come, with hundreds traced back to actually the county and the town and the village of origin. And that number, as Damien said, is expected to rise. There are 11 men identified here that bear my own family name of O'Brien. And standing here today in rural southwest Georgia, we can get a sense of just how far from home they must have felt. And thinking of them, it is deeply moving to dedicate this plaque in their honor and to read its powerful inscription in memory of all the sons of Ireland who suffered here and of their families. And then Trigwelga in the Irish language, Kjolnan Angel, the may they hear the music of angels followed by a sorrowful line in Ulster Scots by the poet James Orr. And it is especially fitting in this place of solemn remembrance to see the Irish, English, and Ulster Scots languages side by side on this plaque here this morning, recognizing the tragedy that befell the Irish buried here. And that tragedy did not discriminate. And we salute them all. Record you. Friends, thank you for your support in remembering the Andersonville Irish. May they rest in peace. Thank you. I have been wondering over the last weeks and months of what words might speak to today, a day of such historical and geographical and cultural and linguistic and family depth. And I remember that the first time I came here a decade ago to go and see President Carter give Sunday school, we came and visited Andersonville Park and I thought how far away it seemed from anything I knew. 
and I knew at that time nothing about the Irish who were here. So one of the reasons that I was dedicated to helping in my small way this plaque come into being here at the park was to try and reduce that distance, to try and reduce that sense of solitude and loneliness. I'm still not quite sure of the word that we should think of. Commemoration, perhaps. Restitution, perhaps. Witness, perhaps. But certainly in witnessing this long line of service, and it's very powerful to me as someone who is an Irish and also an American citizen to see this line of service to the United States to which the Irish have not been visibly added. It's a powerful part of the narrative. Just to think about that sense of accommodation and belonging and witness and remembrance. And I wanted to say too that in having come from a Ulster Scots, a British background, and having become a citizen of the Irish Republic, and being very proud and grateful of that, how powerful it is to me that these men who left forms of injustice and oppression to try and find a new form of liberty in this republic are not remembered by an Irish Republic. How could they possibly have imagined when they left in the 1840s and 50s and 60s that the island of Ireland would look as it does now? So Minister O'Brien, I thank you for your words, but I thank you too for the sense of embodiment of the Republic of Ireland and of Northern Ireland here in this moment. It's not just a case of witness of the past, but also an indication of the future that these men didn't just die, but they were part of a transatlantic exchange that created two republics that still before them have a positive and a bright future. So I leave you with those words of hopefulness. And I want to thank you too, my friends who came from Athens, who've always been such great supporters. And they've always made me feel that that distance between Athens, Georgia, and Belfast in Ireland is not as great as it might otherwise have been. I'm going to stop now, but I wondered could we have a brief moment of reflection and listen as those men might once have done to the birds migrating through the pine trees and the sounds of beautiful Georgia, which I've come to know. Thank you all very much. I think that concludes our, our event for this morning. So thank you for your time. Thank you for traveling to be with us. Thank you, as the minister said, for joining with us in this act of, of remembrance, of memory, of restitution. And um, thank you, Nicholas, for those beautiful words. And I think now all that, all that is left to us is to join Damien um, in, in visiting some of the graves of these Irish men who we've remembered this morning. So thank you. Thank you all.